Hello snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host Averin Lefebvre and in this video we'll be reviewing the new LibTech Orca HP. That's right, they added HP construction to the Orca. So let's break it down in this video. This board features Mervin's C2X camber profile, which is reverse camber between the feet into a longer camber section under each foot. This just gives it a little bit more load and snap in those independent camber zones, but you still get that play of reverse camber between the feet, which just makes it easier in powder, which is what this board is for. This board is available in 138, 144, 147, 150, 153, 156, 159, and 162. I rode this board at Loveland Ski Area in the preseason on a 10 inch powder day. So there was fresh snow, corduroy snow, chunder snow, pushed around snow, cooler temps, sunny skies, zero wind, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label Bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. With LibTech adding HP construction to this board, it beefs it up so it's a ever so slightly above middle of the road flex to it. You still have play out in the tip of the tail, but the midsection is a little bit beefier. You have a little bit less torsional flex to it. Overall, you can just feel that this thing's got a bit more girth and strength to it. And that adds to the stability. You do get a little bit of micro chatter out in the nose, but it never fully resonates back underfoot. When you get into chunder and crap, it pushes through it with ease. It just feels overall as a more damp board compared to what it was where it was a little bit more lively. So if you're looking for an Orca that's more damp, then here you go. If you wanted it more lively, you're gonna to wanna to find an older one. There's snap in this board and due to the C2X camber profile, it's relatively easy to engage. You do pop a little bit more off that back foot from that independent camber zone. But like I said, it's easy to engage and once you load it up, you get that spring and snap. Is it mind blowing the amount of pop that it has? No, but does it get the job done? Yes. With this board getting stiffened up, it takes a little bit more effort to press on the nose and the tail. You feel that instantly. There's more rebound and fight, so you gotta get your weight way out there and really push into it to feel it lock in. The good thing is you still have that reverse camber section between the feet, which lets you manipulate what foot you're on to bend the center of the board and just feel more locked in. You just have to be a little more calculated and precise with it with the new core construction. This board is nimble edge to edge. You notice that it transitions smoothly from toe to heel back and forth without any effort. What's nice is you have those independent camber zones which gives it independent steering so you can engage off the front, center flex the board from the back and just steer it from back there if you want to. And that helps you if you're doing like a tight deep carve and you wanna just spring out of it at the end. You can just drive your knee to the center of the board and it'll slingshot you out. Or you can stay more locked and equally distribute your pressure on both camber zone and just swoop that carve. Overall, I think this board is better for like those medium to super tight carves than really long, hard, drawn out swoopy ones. But that's just my take on it. I mean, you can do them with it if you really want to. I just think that those are better. So who's this board for? The pow chasing free ride fanatic that's a Travis Rice fanboy and wants to join the pod of orcas out on the mountain. So here's the thing. Is this still a good board? Yes. But do I like it? No, I don't think it needed HP construction. It changes the nimbleness and the fun, playful nature of this board to try to appease more people that want it to be this end all be all quiver of one, I'm gonna ride it everywhere. When in truth, it was a volume shifted, low angle, free ride, pow chasing cruiser board. And now it's like a little more precise, a little more carvy cruiser, and it loses the fun. Am I gonna stop recommending this board? No, but does it still have the same hype as the old one to me? Not really, and that's where I stand with it. Comparable boards, the GNU Gremlin, the K2 Cool Bean, the Ride Super Pig. This has been my review of the LibTech Orca HP. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really wanna support us and just help us grow out what we're doing over here, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.